Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. 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 Today we'll continue our reflections on different attributes of God by speaking briefly about God's immutability. God is immutable, which means that he does not change. Also, he cannot change. The word in Latin is mutare. It means to change. It's, when we think of our word, English word mutation. What does that mean? It means a change in something, right? You put im before mutare, and then it becomes immutable, which means unchangeable. The scriptures confirm the fact that God is immutable. In Malachi 3, verse 6, for example, we read, I, the Lord, do not change. And the Apostle James says in his letter, James 1, verse 17, that in God, quote, there is no change nor shadow of alteration. The Arian heresy of the fourth century said, among other things, it said that there was mutability or change to the Logos, to the second person of the Blessed Trinity. The Council of Nicaea in 325 condemned that proposition. And Vatican I, Vatican I Council, 1870, defined God's immutability as a dogma of the faith. That which is mutable or changeable goes from one condition to another, and every creature is this way in some shape or form. We know from experience that everything is continually subject to change. You, get up, you go to sleep at night, you get up in the morning, that's, that's a change. You walk from one place to another, that's change as well. You grow older, that's a change too. You learn something, you forget something else, that's a change as well. Things increase, they diminish. Things are born, they grow old, they die. You have a good ruler, and then now you have a bad ruler, and then you hopefully the next ruler will be a good ruler. Uh, those are changes as well. Everything is continually subject to change both on a substantial level, meaning major changes, and on an accidental level, meaning minor changes. God is not like that in any way at all. God is absolutely changeless. He's immutable in his being, in his living, in his knowledge, in his willing, in his operation as well. And God being unchangeable doesn't mean that he's stubborn or set in his ways. Maybe with us, uh, that might mean that at times. Uh, being unchangeable for God is a perfection. It's not a defect like it is for us at times. Human reason even teaches that God is unchangeable. Change is a defect. It's a defect in finite creatures. It means desisting from a previous state to begin a new state or a new action. God can't stop. God can't do that. He can't stop uh, doing or being one thing and then begin to do or to be something else. He can't do that. He doesn't change. Even philosophy teaches that everything that changes is not necessary. That which is necessary always remains. It always persists or continues in the same condition. When I was teaching CCD to uh, a few sixth graders before entering religious life, of course, one of the students asked the question, well, if God created everything, then who created God? If God created everything, who created him? So I told him, well, it's easy. No one. God's uncreated. That's easy. But I just wanted to make sure that he didn't ask me anything else. And so I said to him, I said, God is the only being that has necessary being. God cannot not be, I told him. And I was right, that actually shut him up. He didn't ask any other questions <laughs> after that. Uh, just throw some philosophy at young people uh, and you'll, you'll stop them in their tracks right away. Uh, that which is necessary cannot change, therefore God cannot change. Also to change means to receive a new reality that you didn't have before, or it means to lose a reality that you had before. God cannot receive, he cannot lose anything. St. Augustine said, you will not find in God any mutation or change nor something that now is different from what it was just a little while before, says St. Augustine. Also, even Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, adds that every change or mutation means from passing from being in potency to being in act, but in God there is no such passage because he is pure act. 
Even the pagan philosophers can understand that. So when God created the world or when he redeemed the world, he didn't change at all. What changed was the relationship of the creature to God, but not God himself. Someone may object and they may say, well, what about in the Bible where it says God repents or he changes his mind? Well, that's fair enough, right? For example, Genesis 6, 6, we read, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth and it grieved him to his heart. Or Exodus 30, 32, verse 14, we hear that after speaking with Moses, it says that the Lord repented, that he changed his mind about the evil that he was going to do to his people. So there it seems that God does regret things or plans one thing, but then changes his mind, right? Well, those are what we call anthropomorphic sayings. They're ways of expressing the thoughts and actions of God, basically so we can understand them in human terms. Uh, and they're meant to help us really understand the personal nature of God as well. The Lord allows us to speak of him in human terms so that we can better understand him and so we can also better understand our own relationship with him. God doesn't change regard, as regards to his perfect love, as regards to his truth, his perfect will, or his demand for righteousness and holiness. However, the manifestation of those unchanging divine attributes, it can find different expressions depending on what's happening on the earth down here. It can, it can be expressed in different ways, depending on what's going on down here on earth. So when the Bible says that God repents or changes his mind, it's just a way of helping us to understand our relationship with him. It doesn't mean that God regrets anything or that he makes mistakes. God doesn't regret making you, for example. He doesn't regret that. Uh, he doesn't think that you are a mistake. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that in difficult moments as well. Lastly, how do we apply this attribute of God's immutability to our own lives? How do we do that? While it's true that only God is unchangeable or immutable, it's also true that God's plan for creation is unchangeable, as are the laws which he has placed in his creation and in his creatures. Human nature does not change. The natural law does not change. Therefore, ethics and morality do not change. While people in the past half, half century have spoken of changing moralities in our culture, typically they've, all that means is that they've abandoned uh, the natural law and Christian morality in order to embrace sin. Do you want to understand what that means? Uh, there's a reason why, for example, 3,000 years ago in the Old Testament, God forbade adultery, why he forbade men having relations with other men. There's a reason why he forbade people to have sexual relations with animals. There's a reason why he forbade incense, in, incest, human sacrifice, why he forbade witchcraft and divinizations and revenge killing. Why? Because all those behaviors are things that people embrace when they move away from God, when they divorce themselves from Him and from the natural law. They embraced those sinful behaviors, then they're doing it now, just as it was in the past. When people think that they can define their own morality or define reality however they want to, or decide even what gender they want to be, when people think that, these are all signs of a profound spiritual and psychological and even a moral illness, shall we say. As we've said the other day, affirming someone in their errors or sins is actually not loving them. We need to testify to the truth of God's unchangeable law rather than affirming people in their errors. Finally, the immutability of God or the fact that he doesn't change actually should be a comfort to us when we think about it because it means that God is not unpredictable. It doesn't mean that he's uh, kind one moment and then he's all upset the next moment, uh, that he isn't calm right now until he starts seeing that we're doing something and he starts getting a little angry. Uh, no, uh, it isn't that uh, he's with us one moment and then the next moment he abandons us. That's not... Who he is, that's not his character. God's character and his goodness and his love for us never changes, so we should take that to heart. 
that the Lord is the one thing, he's the one person who we can always count on because he's always unchanging. And he always wants and wills what's best for us, as we mentioned the other day. So the fact that he doesn't change, he doesn't change uh, should actually help us to learn to entrust ourselves more to him because he's faithful through and through. May Our Lady help us to understand and appreciate the beauty of God's unchanging nature and his unchanging love as well. And may she help us again to learn to entrust ourselves all the more to him. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.